This will be our sixth installment on the subject of the full assurance of faith. <clears throat> Now, assurance is a an imperative in the life of faith. We'll do our best to to develop more what assurance is. Assurance can be full, or it can be partial. Assurance can get you on the water, walk on it for a way, and then but then sink. Uh -huh. yeah. right. Now there is a there's what we call a strain or a type of religion that settles for the lowest view and the least effort. That's the kind of thing Satan promotes. The lowest view and the least effort. Uh -huh. It's a very serious deficiency because God does not accept this. By way, by way of brief comment on the word full, <clears throat> here's the synonyms that go along with it. One is perfect or complete. And the Word of God talks about things that are perfect 99 times. That word is used. So that te is teaching us not to think of partial or fragments or fractions or not to think in that way, or some, not to think in that way. Full assurance is, a, is complete, perfect, and the Word of God uses the word full or fullness or fully 287 times. Full. You may be able to settle for a glass half full. God isn't. What he has is full. He wants it full. Because whatever's not full is room for something else in there. Right. See? Fullness. Or another word to be whole. Whole or holy, not H O L Y, whole or holy, 268 times. You present a burnt offering to God, it was a whole burnt offering. See, so I'm showing you that in the kingdom of God, fullness or completeness or perfection or wholeness, that's a part of spiritual life. You don't, you don't start out with it because you don't have the capacity to contain something like this, but this is, this is where you're to head, this way. Some people have learned to live on sparse, sparse rations for a long time. They may have cut down on the input. And then pretty soon they can live with just a little bit. But they're just barely living. Yeah. It's time for God's people to think of fullness. Amen. And to think of uh, completeness and perfection and wholeness. Time to think in those terms. I will tell you that in the structure of religion that exists today, there is no place for fullness. There's no place for full. There isn't, there, like there, it doesn't fit in anywhere. As soon in the average church setting, you talk about being full or whole or perfect or complete, you at once are an oddball. Now you just check it out and see if this isn't true. Anyone that's on fire for God stands out like a sore thumb. Anyone that is especially knowledgeable of Scripture, peculiar. Whatever you want to talk about, spiritual traits, whatever you want to talk about, it's that way. All right, in the midst of that kind of framework, we're talking about full assurance. It has to happen. Now our text says that we are to draw an eye to God with, true, with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Now this expression, full assurance of faith, is 
represented in various ways in the different versions, and there's something to be seen here. The basic Bible English version says, in certain faith. We might say the certainty yeah. of faith. So fullness has to do with you, you're certain about the thing. Mm -hmm. You're not saying, I hope God comes through, or if, see, you're certain about the thing. Yeah. Amen. The Jewish Bible says, full assurance that comes from trusting. So here, full is a assurance, is full assurance of faith. Full assurance is a product of faith. Amen. Douay version says the fullness of faith. So in other words, faith grows up yeah. or faith matures, assurance results. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Geneva Bible says, in assurance of faith. See, so it, it just assumes assurance is like a full-grown entity. That's what we're targeting, and faith produces it. Murdoch speaks about the confidence of faith. See, full assurance is a high form of confidence, not self-confidence. Confidence in God. New American Bible says, the absolute trust. Yeah, you can see the full assurance of faith. It's, just full, it's not just full assurance, it's full assurance of faith. Uh -huh. no, right. Absolute trust. Mm -hmm. That the devil can't back you in a corner where you stop trusting. Amen. And where you start worrying. Yeah, and where you start fretting. Mm -hmm. And when you're not sure. Mm -hmm. Full assurance separates you from all of that. The New Jerusalem Bible calls it filled with faith. So the idea there is as faith pervades all of your being, assurance, because faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It, it, it is, faith is assurance. And as it grows up, the assurance fills your whole life. Living Bible says fully trusting. Fully dependent upon the Lord, not, uh, not uh, in any aspect of life relying on something other than the Lord. Williams calls it perfect faith, full-grown faith. The contemporary English version says a confidence that comes from having faith. See, there again, I want to develop that a little bit, but it, faith produces this assurance. The Amplified Bible, it has quite a, <laughs> but it shows how big a term this is. The unqualified assurance and absolute conviction engendered by faith by the leaning of the entire human personality on God for absolute and absolute trust and confidence in his power, wisdom, and goodness. <laughs> it's, a, it's almost a whole sermon there, but that's what full assurance of faith, that's, that kind of introduces you to it. All competing interests are put aside. Your confidence is not in anything else but in God. Amen. Your confidence isn't in your ability. Your confidence isn't in your job. Your confidence isn't in your employer. Yeah. Your confidence isn't in your parents. Your confidence isn't in your church. Your confidence is in God. Full assurance. Amen. Now, when is it exactly that we're to have this full assurance? That'd be interesting to pursue. Our text says, let us draw near, as to God, let us draw near, then he adds, in full assurance of faith. So now we're not talking about assurance when you go to your job. We're not talking about assurance when you're at home. We're not talking about assurance when you're in the hospital. We're talking about full assurance when you come near to God. All right, now that puts, <laughs> that puts a different cast on things. Full assurance when you're coming near to God. The closer you get, the more assured you get. The closer you get, the more confident you are. The closer you are, the less fear you have. The closer you are, the less intimidated you are by your enemies. This is increasing as you draw near. Now think of the provisions that's been made for us to draw near. Verses 18 through 21 of this 10th chapter introduce 
some of the things. You've received a remission of sins. All right, that, that's going to contribute to this drawing near and full assurance. You've, you've, re you've received boldness to approach by the blood of Jesus. See, so that's going to contribute now to your assurance. You've got to know that faith is what puts a handle on these things. Faith, right. faith is what makes you see these things excuse me, and rely on them. We approach by a new and living way, the text says. So this is a new way that's not surrounded by death. There's life all the way. That as it's new, there's nothing, never been anything like this before. And it's living that there's sustenance all along the way. It's promoting life. It's not like a Sinai promoted death. Closer you got, the more afraid you became. Closer you got, the more apt you were to be destroyed. See, it wasn't a living way. But in Christ, it's a new and a living way. So if you have the boldness to approach unto God, that's where the full assurance comes into play. And the reason it does is because on the other end, God is drawing you. Amen. See? <laughs> on your end, you're, you're pressing. But on that end, he's drawing. And full assurance results from that. And then he camps it off by saying, and having a high priest over the house of God. So as we draw near, we're leaving behind all the inimical influences of being left behind. <laughs> Satan's being left behind. Flesh being left behind. And we're coming as a high priest up here. Amen. That's representing us to God. Amen. And the closer you get, the more persuaded you are of this. Amen. And the more persuaded you are of this, the more assured you become. Amen. You become very bold. Now it's a necessary for the heart to be engaged as you draw near. Jeremiah talked about this in Jeremiah 30, 21. You do near with the, with the whole heart. That is, it wasn't like drawing near in a crisis. <laughs> See, some people try to draw near to God <coughs> in an emergency. Well, some, and we're not saying that that's bad, understand. We're saying that's not the best. It's pretty hard to do this wholeheartedly because you're intimidated by the circumstance, you're frightened by the situation, and so your, your faith is mingled kind of with fear, so to speak. But full assurance isn't that way. You just raise up your hands expecting the battle to switch to your favor. You lift up your rod and you're expecting to see the part. If you're the high priest, you step, put your foot on the water, you fully expect it to part. That's a full assurance of faith. You expect things to be worked together for your good. And you, you draw near by hope. Hope plays a role in this. Hope is an anchor for the soul. Hebrews 7.19 says, by which we draw nigh. <laughs> How about that? Hope. <laughs> if your heart's in heaven, you're more apt to draw near. Amen. See, if you're, if you're living in anticipation of being forever with the Lord, it does alter how you draw near. Now you approach unto him. And James, he holds a little something out to us. Remember, we're talking about full assurance has to do in our text with coming near to God. He says, draw nigh unto God, James 4, 8, and he'll draw nigh to you. And you had a picture of that in the parable of the prodigal. As the son drew near, father come out to, matter of fact, he ran. And I'll tell you right up front, it may seem like a long way you're taking to get to him. But the biggest distance is traversed by him, Amen. not by you. That's right. Amen. And through Isaiah, and Jesus quoted this, he warned the people, tell me, you draw nigh with your mouth, but your heart's far from me. Now at this point, we come and we address the weakness of the modern worship and praise. This is its weakness. It's too mouthy. It is too mouthy. 
and the people out of whose mouth this is coming are generally not noted for being holy or knowledgeable or filled with faith or setting their affection on things above. They don't look like it. They don't talk like it. They don't act like it. Draw near. God hates this. He hates fabricated praise. In fact, he says, I won't, I won't listen to it. It's a stench in my nostrils. Take it away. Take away the noise. The noise of your song. Not the melody. The noise. Have you noticed that modern worship music is more akin to noise than it is to praise? Have you picked up on this? It's not very musical. It's too noisy. I don't mean no, it like loud noise. I mean it just doesn't, there's no substance to it. It doesn't promote full assurance. <laughs> After one of these praise and worship sessions, you don't find anybody standing in clusters talking about the things of God. You don't find any kind of extension. People want to stay a little longer, hear a little more. You don't find anything like that. Drawing near. Now let's look more closely at this full assurance of faith. <coughs> it's necessary at this point to talk about the work of faith with power. Amen. Paul said to the Thessalonians, he said that he wanted God to fulfill the work of faith with power. What does it mean with power? If a person keeps the faith, they'll obtain assurance. Amen. Amen. They'll obtain full assurance. If they just keep the faith, Amen. faith has power. And one of the products it produces is full, unquestioning, undoubting assurance. Amen. I can do it. Now let's look at some examples of this in Scripture. Abraham has promised something from God that speaking as a man was impossible. And Romans 4, 19-21 says, that when Abraham heard this, he did not doubt. He did not consider his own lifelessness, so far as reproduction was concerned, nor yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did. He this didn't come into his mind. Can I do it? Is it possible? But he was strong in faith, Amen. giving glory to God, and was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able to do. That's full assurance. Now God has spoken about you. He's spoken about keeping you from falling. He's talked about making you stand. He's talked about giving us a high priestess, bringing us to God. He's talked about us being reconciled to God. He's talked about us not being enemies anymore. And not being in the category of not a people anymore. And not being in the category of not receiving mercy anymore. He's talked about all these things to us. And as you believe them, like Abraham believed the promise given to him, and you take hold of it, assurance begins to grow up in your heart. And we have the example of David having full assurance. He's just a boy, about probably in the vicinity of 17. And he's heard Goliath challenge the enemies, challenge the Israelite army. And he, he doesn't say, oh, he's a, that's a big man. Because he is just a little under 10 feet tall. That'd be almost to the ceiling there. And he, he, he rushed out to the Philistine. He said, you're coming to me with a sword and a spear. But I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. You, you threaten to kill me. I'm going to give, I'm going to give your carcass to the birds. Amen. What was that? Full assurance Amen. of faith. Now, you have to experience this to know what I'm talking about. But you, you can't experience this. 
you can face people that at one time intimidated you and you can be bold as a lion. You can sally forth into the battle, not doubting at all. You have an example in David. You have an example in Joseph. Joseph, when he was 17 years old, shortly before he was sold to the Midianites and then finally into bondage in Egypt, he had a couple of dreams. And in his dreams, he dreamed that his parents and his brothers were going to bow down to him. His brothers, they laughed at it, and his father rebuked him for think, saying such, suggesting such a thing. But Joseph kept those dreams. When he was in Egypt, things were going well. Potiphar's house, he must have recalled those dreams. Yeah. This looks like this is going to work out. Yeah. And then he, uh, he's, he goes to prison. Didn't look too good. That he, he kept, that's all he had to believe, brethren. There wasn't any other word revealed to him. He didn't have a lot of things revealed to him like you have. He just had a few things. Just this thing revealed him. Two dreams. He hung on to that. So assurance began. <laughs> assurance began. Finally, the prison keeper detects. Yeah, this young man's pretty confident and pretty wise. He just turns the prisoners over to him. He kept on. Pretty soon he was sitting at Pharaoh's in favor with Pharaoh on the throne. What was that? That was the full assurance of faith. He kept on believing. Even when circumstances didn't look like it was true, he kept on believing. And as he kept on believing, assurance began to sprout. Assurance began to grow. Pretty soon you, could, you couldn't turn Joseph. There wasn't anything to turn you but shackles on his feet, shackles that hurt. And he'd endure till a word came. Till his word came. And he, walked, he marched out of that prison in full assurance. He walked right into the face of Pharaoh, the ruler of the word, then known world. And he announced, he understood the dream, he could tell him what the dream he had meant. And he eventually was ruler over all Egypt. Now you can trace it back to the full assurance of faith. And you have, you have Paul, he demonstrated this full assurance of faith. Jesus told him, he said, you're going to bear witness to me in Rome. You bore witness to me in Jerusalem, like I told you. Now you're going to bear witness to me in Rome. But circumstances didn't look like that was going to happen. Finally, he's getting ready to go to Rome. And, and he's going to be a prisoner when he goes. And some prophets came, told him, bonds await you. When you get there, you're going to be put in prison. Some of the brethren misinterpreted. They said, you shouldn't go. He said, what mean ye to weep and to break my heart? I'm ready to die. What was that? Full assurance of faith. I'll tell you why a lot of people do not progress in the faith. Why they drop out and why they their light begins to dim. They don't have assurance. They're not really, after all the talk is done, they're not sure whether they're in or out. They're not sure whether God's accepted them or not. What should people like that do? They should, rich, they should feed themselves on a rich fare of the gospel and his proclamations that announces what God's doing in salvation and that you can't be saved without this stuff happening. And when you believe it, then assurance starts to grow. Amen. Now if you fight the good fight of faith, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life, that's a rough translation of full assurance of faith. <laughs> Same thing. But yeah, in other words, you have to fight to keep your faith. Amen. Satan doesn't fold his hands and sit in the corner uh -huh. when you believe. He's going to try and take your faith from you or divert you from believing. But you fight the good fight of faith, you'll win. No one who fights the fight, good fight of faith loses. Just fight. 
Even if you think you can't fight, do it anyway. Maybe your hand will cleave to the sword. Keep on fighting. And what will happen? Assurance will grow up and support you. If a person lives by faith, oh, that I could persuade people of this. If you live by faith, total unmitigated assurance will come. You've got to live believing that. That there'll come a time when you'll not have doubt anymore. You'll not be assailed by questions anymore. Amen. Fear will not stalk you anymore. Whatever thrusts the trust of the Lord into the background is your enemy. Amen. The full assurance of faith. All right, let's say it another way is being fully persuaded of the effectiveness of Christ's work. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Is being fully persuaded that your sins have been blotted out. Is being fully persuaded that God has received you in Christ Jesus. Is being fully persuaded you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. See? Yeah. That's full assurance of faith. Now all of this postulates or presumes the consistent and insightful declaration of the gospel. Amen. If that isn't taking place, this full persuasion is not going to come. Because the full persuasion comes on faith, and faith comes by hearing, and it's the hearing of the gospel that he's talking about. Amen. And it presumes that God is sovereign, that God is working salvation in the midst of the earth, that it was given to you to believe and to suffer, and that he's going to work all things together for your good. See, faith, full assurance, just banks. It banks on that. Yes, when things get dim, things get hard, clouds of trial rise, uh -huh. storms beat upon your house, we bank on God is true. Yes, God. And every man a liar. Amen. Yes, it may look like God's not true now, but that he's going to bow to me anyway, just like he told me in the dream, Joseph could say. And he's already told you that they're good. your enemies are going to worship you. Amen. Amen. So next time you confront enemies, just think this to yourself. Now, God's spoken about this situation. If you have the courage, you might say, now I recommend, I'm just a recommendation, that you not be my enemy. Yeah. Because the God I trust in has said, if you are, you're going to bow the knee before me and worship. Uh -huh. And I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if you've got any kind of sense, you shouldn't want it to happen. Yeah. So I recommend you send an ambassador out uh -huh. and make peace. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> It banks on the return of the Lord. See, the full assurance of faith is a banking on the return of the Lord. Banking on all the accounts being settled. Banking on all the judgments being settled. Banking on everything, all wrongs being righted. Banking on the faith that God's going to reveal. I was serious about this. Whether the world knew it or not. He's banking on hearing, well done. He didn't do anything. Full assurance do anything to receive that. And when the time comes, people who didn't bank on it, well, they're going to be very sorry they didn't. They wish they had a full assurance of faith knows that the new man is invincible and the old man is vulnerable. He's convinced of that. See, if a person's not convinced of that, he won't put off the old man or put on the new man. It's a full assurance of faith. He's a lot of things that you are required to do as a child of God that necessitate this full assurance of faith. When you come in, you come in as a babe. But God doesn't intend you to stay a babe because what he asks you to do, a baby can't do. Perfect holiness in the fear of God. You know, babes can't do this. So he expects you to grow up, and then he, as a bonus, <laughs> as a bonus, when you keep the faith, the faith produces 
the assurance that keeps you. Amen. Now I commit those things to you for your consideration. Amen. But Aaron has our word of exhortation. Amen.